Hello, everyone. Um, today, I'll talk about the book by Laura Marx, The Skin of the Film, uh, particularly one chapter titled The Memory of the Senses uh, from page 194 to 242. So this book uh, pushes us to re-examine intercultural cinema through a multi-sensory perspective. Um, Marx doesn't aim to negate the visual totally, but uh, uh, attempts to remind us uh, of the potent blend of sensory experiences like sound, smell, touch, um, or motion uh, that different cultures bring to cinema. Let's start with uh, knowing Professor Laura Marx. Here's the floor to Professor Laura Marx. I'm Laura Marx. I work in the School for the Contemporary Arts at Simon Fraser University. I work on media art and philosophy with an intercultural focus. Today, I'll share a few examples from these films that Marx referred uh, to in the text um, while discussing not only the total sensorial experience of a visual motion art, but also its limits. Uh, and the primary limitation of such knowledge is, is memory association that Laura says, um, because uh, it gives meaning to certain visual montage. Uh, particularly nostalgic portrayal of any object in, in intercultural cinema uh, that can evoke past memories. Uh, and as an audience, um, we, uh, we might be able to feel that sound, smell or touch through our uh, memory by going back to the memory, if it's associated with the memory. For instance, Marx exemplified in, um, on page 204, uh, Grandma's Kitchen, that evokes certain memory, right? Uh, the tobacco my grandfather used to smoke. Uh, so these are easier to identify through personal memory associations. And that's what Marx is talking about, uh, uh, that uh, certain visual montage can evoke all those senses, even though it's visual, but it can arouse other senses um, that you can smell, that you can hear, uh, because it's in our memory, it's deeply rooted there. And there comes the quote of the cinematographer of the film, Daughters of the Dust, directed by Julie Dash in 1991. And the quote goes like this, the culture that's going to survive in the future is the culture we, we carry in a, you can carry in your head um, on page 200. Uh, and uh, Arthur Jaffa actually cited his uh, idolized visual artist, another artist, uh, Namjoon and Baik, on page 200 of this book, uh, The Skin of the Film. Um, so let's talk about this example. This film has been cited a lot of times. It, it has been discussed by Laura Marx uh, plenty of times in this chapter, Daughters of the Dust. So in this film by Julie Dash, we see the powerful juxtaposition of women preparing food and Aunt Viola reading the Bible. So this... Uh, comparison between um, these two different things going at the same time, or this comparison showcases a, a blend of oral culture, intergenerational knowledge, um, and definitely the looming shadow of Christianity on page 225 in this book. Uh, so let's have a look at the scene. <laughs> The earth, O oh Lord, is swelling with fruitage and reminds us that this is the seed time of life. That not today, not tomorrow, will come the true reaping of the deeds we do, but in some far veiled and mighty harvest. Not deceiving ourselves with the apparent ease of evil. Looking to that harvest when the earth belongs to the Lord, not us, and the fullness thereof. Hmm? In an interview, uh, Julie Dash, the director of the scene that we just have watched, uh, her intention, she said, her intention was not at all to make an ethnographic film um, because it makes the viewers passive consumers of knowledge. That's a different question or argument we can discuss further. And there, Professor Marx talked about um, synesthesia, 
which refers to experiencing one type of sensation through a different sense, like perceiving colors through touch. Um, so current technologies cannot truly replicate all the kinds of feelings like touch, smell, and taste or movement. Uh, they can only emulate or hint at at this sensations like how virtual reality combines sound and uh, visuals to suggest motion. So filmmakers from diverse cultures adapt cinematic uh, tools um, to better reflect their deep sensory connections with their surroundings um, that Marx talked about uh, in this uh, book, in this chapter on page 202 since the beginning. And Marx further cited um, other books like The Senses Still by C. Nadia Sedimatakis. Um, and while talking about that book, also uh, highlighted uh, adaptation of a very famous poem by Maya Angelou, Still I Rise, and which has been visually adapted by Ngozi Onwura. Uh, and this adaptation uh, confronts the stereotyped idea that Black women are more physical and more sensual on page 206. Now, this question was, was raised um, at the beginning of the text as well. How to free our eyes from cultural constraints? Sultry, savage, dirty, hard, exotic, erotic. Marx proceeds to highlight the difference um, between visually analyzing an object from an outsider's uh, perspective or from the outside and knowing that uh, object from inside, which is through lived embodied experience. And the Marx talked about it on page 218. Um, there's a video art named uh, Siskiyavi, The Place of Chasms by Victor Masayesva, if I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah, it's a good example of this insightful discussion where Marx's father deepens uh, this discourse uh, by highlighting visual anthropology's pitfalls in, in colonizing the sensory order of studied uh, cultures uh, on page 230. They used to teach us to respect those things and be afraid of them. The legends of the Hopi people could be seen through the designs of the pottery. The figures such as birds, people, animals, and geometric designs are related to history. These designs are the symbols of plants, ceremonial events, and people who are important. Grandma, like you told me, on a particular pot, there was a circle divided into fours. The circle represents the four worlds we, which we lived in. In the circle, bird tracks are painted. Then there were geometric designs like trails leading to different places. They were going constantly in circular motion. Every path leads to the same place. The earth is a circle which never ends, meaning that wherever you go, you always end up at the same place. All these examples of what our life is made of. So, however, Mark claims that interaction with a traditional object can awaken these senses. Uh, another example, uh, best example um, that I've found in this book, um, how objects can awaken our senses. Well, talking about this, Marx uh, referred to a film, um, a Vietnamese director, Tran Ang Hung, um, who was nominated for Academy Awards as well in Best Foreign Language Film. The film is named The Scent of Green Papaya. And this chapter brings, uh, the, the phrase while talking about this film, fragrant film, while discussing a scene from this cinema uh, where we are not just watching papaya being cut open, we are recalled to engage with its very essence, to feel the translucence of its seeds, to remember the aroma of our fresh papaya on page 222. Yeah. And Marx termed it as. Um, exiles nostalgia and also the director of this film said in an interview how papaya was a significant memory connected with his childhood the director was born in vietnam but later migrated and became a filmmaker in france uh, and marx identifies uh, this as sense memory as being uniquely affected <laughs> Thôi, vâng cứ mang mình lên đi. 
So intercultural filmmakers, uh, as highlighted by Marx, stretch cinematic tools to portray their authentic and sensory rich connections to the world. Um, the materialist retentionistic, uh, that concept by Arthur Jaffa, uh, where he emphasizes this tangibility, urges us to engage with cinema, not just through our eyes, but with all the possible senses. Um, and finally, Laura Marx invites us uh, to a cinematic experience that transcends the visual. Um, and this book reminds us uh, that we, when we find nothing to see, there might be a world to feel or even to smell on page 231. While reading this chapter, it reminds me a film that I recently watched, uh, directed by Susanna Diaz. Uh, the title of that film is 48, which is a documentary film where, where she interviews 48 prisoners uh, tracing Portugal's um, fascism, the period of fascism from 1926 to 1974. And literally, there are scenes without any visual completely blank screen. Um, so the audience must feel the sounds and ambience to flow with the with those victims' narratives, sometimes ambience like hesitation, sound of pencils, or scratching the table with nails. Um, when these victims were sharing their stories, um, these sounds have meanings. And Susanna Diaz said in an interview that she didn't realize that while filming it, how these sounds can add a dynamic dimension to the storytelling sensorium. Um, instead, uh, she realized uh, this in the post-production, how important these sounds were. Uh, let me show you a glimpse of this film. Os gritos de uma pessoa que me parecia, umas vezes a Alice, outras vezes o meu pai, outras vezes a minha mãe, outras vezes o miúdo, E depois, quando aparece o indivíduo com, com o alguidar, então aquilo, há muita gente que pode não... Eles começam a meter aquilo em cima da mesa. Tiram o, o serrote, tiram o, a, a faca e começam a dizer, então, então quem é que começa primeiro? Aquilo mete terror. Porque houve muitos que claudicaram. Tiveram muito medo e o medo transformou-se numa outra coisa que é falar. Cinema. Uh, in its truest essence, is not just a play of light and shadow, but a, but a tapestry of senses, memories, and uh, uh, emotions. Um, and Mark says, it may not always bring forth the missing senses, but um, it has certainly the power to evoke those senses. And that's all. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much.